Hello everyone and welcome back to everything you need to know as a board member or economist in a central bank with a state-of-the-art FPAS Mark II framework. I'm Anahit Jaloyan, a Level 1 student at the Global Forecasting School and an economist at the Central Bank of Armenia. We're continuing our deep dive into essential topics for anyone working in central banking and today's topic is particularly relevant, the conflict theory of inflation. We're fortunate to be joined again by Narek Kazarian, one of our board members, who has extensive experience in policy analysis. Narek, thank you for sharing your insights with us today. Thank you, Anahit. I'm glad to be here and to discuss such an important topic. The conflict theory of inflation is a foundational concept for understanding inflationary dynamics and how they impact monetary policy, particularly within the FPAS Mark II framework. To start, could you explain what the conflict theory of inflation is and why it's important for central bankers? Certainly. The conflict theory of inflation, originally developed by economist Robert Rothorn in the 1970s, views inflation as the outcome of competing claims on national income, mainly between workers who seek higher wages and firms who aim to maintain profit margins. This conflict can lead to inflation if wage demands and pricing behaviors aren't well coordinated. In essence, it's a tug of war over income distribution. If workers push for higher wages to maintain or improve their standard of living while firms raise prices to protect their profit margins, an inflationary cycle can develop. This theory is particularly relevant when external shocks like rising energy prices strain both sides. That's fascinating. How does this theory apply to modern day challenges central banks face, particularly in times of high inflation, like we've seen recently? Great question. Rothorn's theory is very applicable today, especially when we look at recent cost of living crises. In many ways, we're seeing a repeat of what happened during the oil shocks of the 1970s, where rising costs led firms to pass these increases onto consumers, triggering inflation, while wages struggled to keep up. Today, similar pressures come from supply chain disruptions, labor shortages, and energy price spikes. The conflict theory of inflation provides a lens for central bankers to analyze these pressures. When we see inflation driven by this conflict, it's essential for central banks to take a balanced approach. If policy solely aims to contain inflation through economic tightening, we risk creating recessionary conditions. But ignoring these inflationary pressures can lead to unanchored inflation expectations. That balance sounds challenging. How does the FPAS Mark II framework help in managing these dynamics? The FPAS Mark II framework is ideally suited for this, as it's built around scenario-based analysis and prudent risk management. We're not locked into a single approach. Instead, we consider a range of potential scenarios, some where inflationary pressures persist, others where they stabilize. In a conflict-driven inflationary scenario, FPAS Mark II allows us to assess whether inflation might naturally ease as supply constraints resolve, or if it's embedded more deeply in wage price dynamics. This nuanced approach helps us decide when to take action, or alternatively, wait for certain pressures to subside without overstressing the economy. Thank you, Narek. That gives a lot of clarity on how the FPAS Mark II framework handles these complexities. Are there practical takeaways for GFS students who want to apply this understanding in their work? Absolutely. The key takeaway for GFS students is to learn to distinguish between proximate causes and fundamental causes of inflation. For example, energy price hikes might trigger inflation, but the underlying trend in inflation over time is governed by monetary policy. In other words, while supply shocks are proximate causes, central banks must manage the fundamental inflationary trend by anchoring expectations. Second, scenario planning is essential. GFS students should always think in terms of multiple potential outcomes, assessing both expected scenarios and tail risks. This approach equips them to navigate complex, conflict-driven inflationary environments. Thank you, Narek, for such an insightful discussion. And to our listeners, if you're interested in advancing your skills, remember that the Better Policy Project offers two annual scholarships for the GFS program, covering the program fee. Applications are reviewed monthly with a rigorous interview and testing process to ensure candidates are ready to thrive in a dynamic learning environment. Thank you, Anahit. 
It's always a pleasure, and I look forward to seeing how GFS students take these ideas and apply them in their work. And to everyone listening, if you'd like to support the Better Policy Project and the Global Forecasting School's mission to enhance economic and financial literacy, please subscribe to this podcast and hit the like button. Join us next time as we continue exploring foundational concepts for central bankers and economists. Thanks for tuning in and see you next time.